This is what I came up with for a polishing pass. And what it does is it kind of heats the surface to the point where it, it almost turns into a mirror. Yeah. This one. Yep. And it's smooth as hell. It's crazy. You were doing the golf clubs, right? You had a reference photo of what you were looking to do and a reference photo of where you were at so far. And yes, you wanted to right. kind of smooth out the engraving a little bit. Yeah, that's one um, of the main goals for me today. And okay. I think for you, some easy like when questions after it. So this is the, the main deep engraving setting. Okay. So 6,000 millimeters a second is super, super quick, but you're yeah, also well, decently high power there. So that's good. So the size of your lens, is it a 200 or? Yeah. Okay, cool. What I would do in this case, 0.08 would be really good for reproducing something like photos. If you think about it like a photo printer, yeah. where you're you're representing it through DPI, 0.08 is perfect because you're going to be right around that 300 to 320 DPI area. So that's really great for photo work, actually. But when you're doing deep engraving, you're going to want to bring that probably just a little bit tighter because it's going to help even out the lines a little bit. Usually for engraving, our default value that we use for that's 0.025. And the reason why we do that is just because there's enough overlap there where if you think about it like a flashlight mm -hmm. where you have softer edges and then in the center it's the brightest yeah. the laser behaves the same way mm -hmm. so at 0.025 to 0.035 is kind of that overlap area where it helps soften the edges of the the lines where the laser passes if you want to pick one of these as a reference just so you can have it to compare to what you did that's totally fine too then I take my Duffy Duck. I love him. Perfect. Okay. Uh, give me the, the reference settings. Yep. It is 0.025 for the line interval. For speed, we're going to do yeah. 500. It's going to be a little bit slower, but it'll require less passes than what you were doing before, yeah. probably. For max power, I would do between 50 and 60. Mm -hmm. For frequency, we're going to do 50. Yeah. So here's where uh, we're going to talk about a little bit of technique with deep engraving. Have you ever used uh, auto rotation before on your hatch? Um, auto rotation is angle increment. It's this, yeah? Yep, perfect. So what that does, if your hatch angle is zero, right? So mm -hmm. in the in the little preview to the left of your mouse, you have the the zigzags that tell you which way the hatch is going to go. So it's yeah. going to start at the bottom and it's going to cross upward as it does the zigzag. So what the angle increment does is as it completes a pass going up to fill the area, it's going mm -hmm. to rotate in the direction. What I typically do, if we think about it as making a full circle, it would be 360 degrees. So I do mm -hmm. something that's divisible into that. So if I wanted to make 10 passes, I would do 36 degrees. If you want to do, we could do 10 passes at 36 degrees, and then we can use that as our starting point. We need to turn on the auto rotate or else the angle increment won't engage. Okay. So we can click OK with that. And that's my starter deep engraving settings. The, the benefit of the auto rotation is it should help kick some of the stuff out of the engraving. Um, How does it look? It's way smooth, huh? Yeah, it should be about half a millimeter, what I need okay. in, in depth. And, um... Is it feel smooth to the touch too? Yeah, totally, totally. Okay. So we're we're going in the right direction at least. So that's yeah. good. This looks totally different, to be honest. But it's had, it has no um, no effect in deep engraving right now. But the edges are perfect now. Okay. So what's next? So let's incorporate in a cleaning pass. So we'll do 500 speed, 55 power. We'll keep it consistent just so we know. 0.025. Let's stay with 30, huh? Eh? Yeah, let's stick with 30. Um, 12. So we do auto thing and yep. thing. And, and, and then, then up at the, the top, we're going to add a sub layer. So the plus button. And for this one, we'll do 500 speed. We're going to do about 45 power. And for frequency, let's bump it up. So with my main laser, my JPT 60 watt, I'll double the frequency because it has a huge frequency band. Mm -hmm. But with the, the Rakus, we have a much narrower frequency band. We can only go 50 to 100. I would do like 70 frequency or 65. And we're just going to do one pass of that. Mm -hmm. 
let's go back to the first layer for just a moment. And we're going to duplicate it next to the plus button. We're going to kind of pancake the cleaning layer and halfway in. So we're going to do 15 passes or 10 passes and then a, a cleaning layer and, and then cleaning layer. Then there's again, yeah. 15 passes and the cleaning layer. Yep. So we're going to start with that and we're going to see how that does. Mm -hmm. So this one should come out a, a bit smoother. I still think I need a couple of hundreds passes. Yeah, to it's going to be a lot more passes, but as long as we can get it evened out here, it'll mitigate a lot more problems further down as you get deeper. If it gets it really gets rough halfway through or less, then it's just going to make it worse as you get lower. Maybe we can do this question in between. Uh, with the X and Y axis, can I rotate it about 180 degrees? It's just because of my setup here makes it a little easier for me to just rotate it up about 180 degrees. Yeah, I see, I see what you mean, where if it's the other way, you basically have the golf club going right through your walkway. Yeah, that, that's, that's why Duffy has to, has to be upside down. Let's go to device settings. In the field settings, top left, angle is the one we want. That will physically rotate the way the laser outputs. So if we rotate it 180 degrees, it will be rotated around perfectly opposite to where it is now. So we just put 180 there, and that'll be that'll sort that out. Okay, perfect. Let's just complete it. Oh, yeah. It's really smooth. It's really good. So that's what we want. So the, the thing about the way we engrave, basically, it, it's kind of builds on every layer before it. We want to mitigate the problems before they start. So if we end up doing a really deep engraving with no kind of cleaning or anything going on in between, and it starts to get mm -hmm. rough, all it's going to do is continue to get rougher because yeah. as it starts to build up ridges or little hills or, or anything like that, it's going to so magnify the problem. I did prepare to do a little bit of a polishing pass. Technically, lasers can't polish by a, a normal definition, but what we can do is we can heat up the surface to make a little bit more of a mirror finish where it'll accept color yeah. a little more handily. Yeah. So we go again. We're going to add a new layer. I'm going to give you another setting to try. I use it for like a polishing pass before I'm doing yeah. colors. So here's the thing. We're kind of building on, on layers of knowledge here. So once we do the engraving, right, typically what we would do with color marking is we would mark the surface and we wouldn't want to ablate it. And what we're doing is kind of reverse of that. We want to ablate because we want the color to be in the engraving in this case. So the reason why we would want the color markings to be on the surface instead is because there's more protection. It won't rust as handily. Mm -hmm. So what we're doing when we're making colors is we're taking the chromium in the steel mm -hmm. and then we're, we're oxidizing it with heat from the laser. When we have the oxygen and the heat and it oxidizes the chromium, it creates the oxide layer. But the problem is, is it's, it's imperfect. So we're, we're going to end up with little divots that can rust over time. That's why a lot of the time we don't want to mark the metal at all. We just want to go for color. So we're kind of working backwards from that. If these are used and exposed, because if you're hitting a golf ball, the moisture in the grass will be exposed to it, the humidity in the air. So it could eventually rust. So one yeah. thing that we can do is we can keep it oiled or we can treat it with like an automotive sealant, like a clear coat. Take the acrylic paint to, to fill it in. The main problem is that the, the colors in there, they're soaking in with the deep, the deep engraving. And when the, when the surface is not smooth like the, what we did now, yeah, it's always looking a little shit. So in the new layer, yeah. we're going to do 500 speed, mm -hmm. 40 power. And it's going to be 95 kilohertz. It's basically right at the top of the range almost. And the line mm -hmm. interval is 0.025. And this one, we're going to want to turn on crosshatch. Just one pass for the polish. This is what I came up with for a polishing pass. And what it does is it kind of heats the surface to the point where it, it almost turns into a mirror. Yeah. This one. Yep. And it's smooth as hell. It's crazy. So we have our engraving pass, then we have our cleaning, engraving and cleaning, our polish pass. If I wanted to do colors on the laser, that's where I would start layering in color. If you wanted to go the color route, that's where I would start at the end of that. 
I think I will ninety nine 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 percent. I want a, a acrylic painting in there. That's, well, that that's going to be better for longevity too, because that'll that'll seal it from rust anyway. Um, yep. do, you, do you have any um, files to make the colors? If if I want to go that way. So what I can do, I do have some colors that I prepared. Basically, what I do is I do the engraving, I do a cleaning, I do a polish pass, mm -hmm. and then after the polish pass, I'll layer on settings for doing color testing. Have you ever done a test grid before in Lightburn? Uh, yes. When it does the test squares, you have a grid of 10 by 10. What I'll do is I'll, I'll do all of them the same engraving pass, all of them the same cleaning, all of the same polish. And then in the first box, I'll I'll do a test for like a peach color. The second box, I'll do like a pearlescent blue. The downside is it's it's probably going to be a little different for you. Of course. But the the settings that I give you should at least give you a starting point as to the range of what to expect. So if we do a material test, instead of doing speed, we would be doing, for example, power, interval, or frequency. So mm -hmm. Effectively, if we're doing colors on the laser, we would be doing like a precision heat treatment because again, colors are the oxide layer that com that you get when you combine the, the heat with the oxygen in the air, it, it mm -hmm. oxidizes. Everything here basically contributes to that. For example, speed, if you go faster versus slower, slower gives you a lot of heat all in one spot really quickly. Mm -hmm. If you go faster, it spreads that heat out a little bit more evenly. If you do power, a large amount of power up front, you're going to end up engraving it. But if you reduce that power, you want to be low enough where you're you're just heating the surface. Mm -hmm. Especially with this, where with a rachis source where you don't have pulse width control, mm -hmm. typically what we would do is if you wanted to do colors with a rachis, you would defocus maybe yeah. 2.5 or 3 or 4 millimeters mm -hmm. away from your normal focal point. So basically your power density is much wider yeah. it's going to spread that heat instead of having so much density that it ablates and then frequency again with the 50 watt we have a 50 to 100 range 50 is where the basically the mac the peak power is with our rake sources mm -hmm. uh, for the 50 watt anyway usually for colors if we're not defocusing we're going to be probably at 100, between 180 most of the time. If we go much lower than that, we're going to be ablating, and then we might end up with a lot of like liney texture. So if you defocus a bit, you don't really have that problem. You can go lower and you can end up with a bigger color range. Mm -hmm. And then, for example, with the speed, one thing you can do that often gets overlooked, you can actually end up with, instead of just flat, like matte color, you can actually get like a metallic texture like a flake paint like on a car by doing more power all at once with a lower it's it's difficult to kind of balance with a, a golf club you probably aren't too concerned about warping with, because it's going to end up soaking up all that heat but if you're doing so, like a flat one millimeter sheet of steel it would be warping all over the place just a couple factors to keep in mind and then when you find ones that you like save it into your library where we added all those sub layers we did today yeah, you can sure. actually save that right into your library now if you wanted to. If you create new from layer and you have the the layer selected, material name would be like steel, for example. And what I call the ones that have multi layers like that, I'll call it like a ready to go or a all in one pass or something like that. Mm -hmm. That way, mm -hmm. I know it's something that is like a an inclusive project. Basically, it used to take yeah. me like five or ten minutes just to assemble all the layers yeah of course i can just click it and i'm done in 10 seconds now yeah perfect all right one quick question is uh, does it change the setting if i go to another laptop let's say windows yeah do i need to adjust it or can i just take them what you can do actually so if you've already done this go up to file and we're going to go to bundles mm. and we're going to go to export mm -hmm. and this basically takes a carbon copy of your settings your mm -hmm. presets any libraries that you have saved and your devices okay. and that information is stored in your device settings so that's okay. going to get copied into this okay and that'll be good good to go so what you would do is you would take that export file usually what i do is i keep it in google drive 
yeah or on a flash drive it's a it's file i can open in windows and and mac right so okay. double clicking on it won't do anything what you have to do is go to file bundles import and import it that way mm -hmm. but it'll import you'll see your laser you'll see basically everything as you see it here it won't have your project history or anything like that you'll have to copy that over separate in terms of the the software configuration and then one more thing that you would want to copy if you close that out and go to file for me again is your preferences mm -hmm. and then export a copy of that and load that again and what that'll do is if you made any changes to for example filled rendering uh, is usually off by default at least on windows computers mm -hmm. i don't know if it's different for mac but if you change that, if you change anything with the preview, millimeters or inches for your, yeah. your measurement desire or uh, anything like that, basically, that'll copy all of those and just do the same thing. Import a copy of that when you move over and then you won't have to mess with anything. You you would recommend if I go to, to let's say, 300 passes, I would stay with go 15 passes, one cleanup, 15 passes. Would you would you recommend this or you say you can do 50 passes and then one cleanup? If you just wanted to multiply it out, so like uh, 15 would divide out into 300 uh, 20 times. So 40, 40 passes would give you 600. So what I would do is I would actually, if you delete pass three, four, and five and just do one and two, and then in your global settings, you would repeat that 40 times. That would give you your 600 passes. And then you only have to deal with two sub layers. That way you don't have to duplicate it out where you have like that's what 40 I was sub layers. Yeah. 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 That's that was my idea as well. This we did I just keep this the, the polishing thing. So if you if you that. polish it, it might it might slow down the engraving process because it's gonna harden and create an oxide layer. Mm -hmm. So I would leave that off until you're done. Yeah. Because what it'll do if you leave it there is it'll do one, two, and then it'll it'll do a uh that polishing layer. And mm -hmm. then it's going to go back and try and engrave over it. It's going to slow it, slow down the process on you. Yeah. Okay. So you think one one of the polishing? Yeah. Passes. Just at the end. Just at the end. Just the engrave, then the cleaning pass. I would leave the polishing one just to the very end. I wouldn't do it in the middle. But yeah, that's how I would do it. Yeah, this make makes sense. I just need to get used to the to the material library. This. The other nice thing about the material library, after you get some settings in there, you can save it. Mm -hmm. and have a saved exported copy so if mm -hmm. you ever switch computers or if you want to add a computer to the shop mm -hmm. that's another thing you can throw into google driver or on a flash drive very cool all righty we'll we'll talk to you soon we'll have that email out to you yeah and perfect. uh if anything comes up just shoot us an email have a good day you too have a good one